probably last week knowing that I was going to speak this message um, it's about the message series that we're going to speak now is about soul struggles and how many know that that's what the enemy wants is our soul right so um, I just want to thank my leadership for the privilege because this is a privilege to be up here and be able to share what God has been doing in my life and what he's showed me through this me uh, message that I prepared or that he prepared um, so thank you so much. Um, let's go ahead, bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. Thank you for the breath in our lungs, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the purpose that you've given each and every one of us, Father. I just pray that every heart that is here in this service, Father, is open to your word, Father God, and that there is good soil, Lord, for this word to land, Lord, so that you may... Uh, Plant a good seed, Father, and so that it may grow, Lord, so that we can serve you better, Father God. Lord, I pray over each mind, Lord, that's here, Father God, that when we do have uh, toxic thoughts, Lord, that you are able to help us, Father God, overcome those toxic thoughts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a seat. Alrighty, so um, like I said, we're going to talk about this message series is about soul struggles. And last month, we talked about the Holy Spirit, and we learned about the Holy Spirit once we, that once we accept the Holy Spirit into our hearts, then it is final, right? So we always have Him as our advocate, our leader, our counselor, and our guide. However, the Holy Spirit cannot move in through our lives in powerful ways if we are still stuck in our old ways. Sin separates us from God, so we need to address the soul struggles that separate us from God, what God has purposed for us. Just as God is a trium being, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we are also a trium being, body, soul, and spirit. The body can only do what the soul tells it to do, and the soul can only do what it accepts, it, uh, accepts from the spirit. All the devil needs to do is to rob us from our inheritance in heaven and keep us keep our soul in bondage. So in this message series, we'll be discussing the three parts of our soul and its struggles. The mind, will, and emotions that make up the soul. And once we are able to fully surrender all of these areas, we're able to operate in the fullness of what God has for us. Which brings me to my first point, which is you are a thinking being. Um, we are a thinking being. The battle of our soul starts with our mind. When we let our thoughts run wild, they begin to hold us captive. Toxic thoughts are from the enemy and they are meant to keep you captive. How many of you have ever sat in your room and just um, someone, you know, made you mad and then your mind just starts running wild? <laughs> Your mind just starts run I know, trust me. Your mind just starts running wild or you're driving and someone for those that drive cuts you off and then your mind just starts thinking like you wanna say something like why'd you get in my way or what's wrong with that person? So your mind just starts running wild and they stay in your mind and you just create this whole drama in your mind. That's what a captive thought is. Um also, what about when you're on TikTok and, you know, your algorithm starts bringing, like, I'm going to be honest, my stuff is mostly about <laughs> murder and, you know, oh like, God, cases and all that stuff. And it just, the more you like, the more you view, the more it gives you that all that bad stuff and it more it consumes your soul because that's all you're looking at. And then you start to notice that you start changing, your attitude starts changing for example, um, because my algorithm shows me nothing but that stuff, if my son tells me I'm going out tonight, automatically I think something's gonna happen. 
he's going to be in an accident. Or if I see a news report and I think, oh, well, that's where my son is, automatically I go to that whole uh, violent thought. That's what social media does to you. Um, also, when your parents ask you to do something and you don't want to do it, you automatically think they're against you and they're, they want to do something to you and they're mad at you, so they're making you do something you don't want to. <laughs> Uh, what about listening to music that's not pleasing to God? I'm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm guilty of that. Sometimes I, I think we're all guilty. yes, in bold letters, I put guilty. <laughs> that's also another way of getting toxic thoughts in your mind because we're depositing nothing but bad things into our mind and that just comes out ugly, right? He can also use past traumas like abusive relationships or situations that can bring you toxic thoughts. Um, soon you'll see your abusers the same as, I mean, soon you'll see others as your older abusers. But how many know that um, it's just a tactic of the enemy to ruin what, the, what God has called you to be? He called you to be rulers of the earth. Um, in Genesis 1.26, um, it says, it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So he gave you authority over the, over the earth and over mankind and over the uh, waters. So why does the enemy want to attack you in these ways? So that he could stop your purpose. So let's talk about those to uh, toxic thoughts and how they are viral to your body, which is my second point. A toxic thought is viral to your body because medical studies show that 75 to 98% mental and physical illness come from toxic thoughts. Whatever your mind thinks, it releases to a body as a signal, and that signal impacts the body, and then it responds. For example, have you guys ever cleaned your room and you stub your toe on the bed and it hurts? You scream, right, because it hurts. But is it your toe screaming, or is it that your toe hit the corner and it sent a signal to your brain, and then your brain said, oh, something's wrong, scream, there's pain. That's how your mind works. It, it, con it communicates to your body and then your body shows the pain. So um, when I read that, it made perfect sense because I've gone through this before. Um, the thoughts manifest into worries and then worries manifest into stress and then headaches into depression. It's all a cycle. Depression then goes from oversleeping to overeating and then to suicidal thoughts and so on. That's why when we have men, we have so many illnesses like diabetes, high cholesterol, and obesity because we eat our feelings and those are all in our head. And then the enemy attacks in the mind to destroy the physical body so he can destroy your godly purpose on earth, which was what he said in Genesis, right? The enemy also can find ways to destroy you and how much better ways than to destroy you slowly, attacking your mind and then it comes out through your body, right? So it's like a python. Do you guys know what a python does when he has a prey? If he sees like, he, uh, eats, it. he eats it, but when he grabs it, he attacks it, right? And then he wraps his uh, body around its prey and he slowly squeezes it until he you know, breaks bones, shatters, suffocates it. That's exactly what the enemy does with our thoughts. He slowly squeezes himself around us until we can't take it anymore and then our body starts to show the impact of what we're doing in our mind. Um, many years ago I was married and this is why I say I've gone through this because we can also carry other people's burdens. Um, in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be alert and serve your mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls like the roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 
Because he's like a lion who devours its prey. What do they do? They hide behind the grass and then they just attack, right? So what he did to me was five years ago or more than five years ago, um, the person I was married to had a lot of uh, mental problem, mental um, health problems, depression, all that. All of his problems became my problems. So I started carrying them on my back like they were my own problems. And throughout those whole years, I started to manifest it through my body. And then I started having like the knee pains, all of that stuff. And I didn't know at the time what it was doing until I came here to New Hope and I got prayed over. And someone told me, it's because you, I don't know, God spoke to her and told her, you've been carrying someone's uh, problems on your back and that's why your knees hurt. Which makes perfect sense because that's what the enemy does. He uses other people's worries, just like the lion that prowls on his prey. He uses anything that he can to defeat your purpose. And if I also put down, don't be a victim to your thoughts. We control them before they can become an action, no matter your situation. Um, in Romans, uh, sorry, negative, uh, Point number three is overcoming negative thoughts. In Romans 15, 13, it says, May the God of your hope of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by power of the Holy Spirit. I said, Don't be a victim to your thoughts. We control them before they can become an action, no matter your situation. Paul was uh, imprisoned three times and he endured being shipwrecked stonings for preaching God's word. He didn't let his situation keep him spiritually in prison because while he was held captive, he led many people, even a prison guard and his family to the Lord. I've seen this many times, even traveling to Mexico, there's kids your guys' age, even younger, that are working in the streets, cleaning windows, um, even selling gum to, you know, uh, provide for their family. So they don't let their situation of poverty stop them. It says, you must put God first and hold to his promises. The faith you have will allow you to break free from the toxic thoughts that keep us captive. There's many people in the world right now that are simply just holding on to the faith that have. That's what keeps them going. It says, uh, so put, what about the families who are battling illnesses and then all they have is faith in God that God's going to move in their life, right? So that doesn't stop them from having any toxic thoughts in their mind. <clears throat> and my point number four, it says, we are wired to change our mind. The Lord gave us the triple promise in his word from Psalms 121, 7, 8. It says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life and the Lord will watch over your coming, going both now and forever. That's a triple promise, right? He will, the Lord will keep you from harm. He will watch over your life. And the Lord will watch your coming and your going forevermore. So keep this promise and remember he gave you the authority to take control over your mind, your body and soul. So I wanted to do an exercise um, when we have uh, toxic thoughts. And it's called cognitive fusion is when you're, so everybody close your eyes. Okay, so now you're going to think something bad about you that someone probably said or something that you saw and you think, oh, is that me? Like, I'm stupid, right? That's cognitive fusion. That's thoughts that are constantly running through your mind, right? Negative thoughts. Now what you're going to do is you get that thought and name it something. You can name it toxic, bad, negative Nancy, whatever you want to name it. So take that thought and name it. Now you see how when you name it, it separates you from that thought. 
you're no longer attached to it. That's an exercise that you can do whenever you're having bad thoughts in your room, when you're at school, when you're here, anywhere, where we had bad thoughts all day. I had bad thoughts all week, even coming to service. But I learned to detach myself from those thoughts. Because why? Because the enemy wants us to keep us from our purpose. The purpose that God gave you. Even right now, you can still be having negative thoughts about yourself just sitting there. But don't believe those lies because the enemy just wants to distract you from what God has purposed you. Every minute and every second that you're breathing, that's a purpose that God has given you in this earth. It's an opportunity for you to speak about God. And he wants to take that from you. Um, I wanted to speak on King David. So in 1 Samuel 16, 7 through 13, we're gonna read that, it's pretty long, but I wanted you to see um, what happened to King David. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord look at, looks at the heart. Then Jesse called, I can't say that word, <laughs> and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by by Samuel and said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse and seven of his sons passed before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. And he was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and the handsome features then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So King David, before he was King David, he was a sheep herder. He was a little short guy, I guess you could say the Bible said. And his brothers were huge, you know, huge guys. And David was like the gopher. Go for this, go for that. Take your brothers this, go do this, go do that, right? But God didn't look at David's stature. He didn't look at how small he was, God saw his heart. He knew that David would worship him, praised him, and did everything that he could to please God. So God honored that. So let's not let the enemy lie to us with our appearance and what we look at on the outside, or even what we've done in our past life, because God already forgave you for that. It's this day forward what counts. Every day that you're here is what counts, not what was before. And I can tell you that I come from a dark past, and sometimes the enemy does um, remind you of those things, but you just have to remember that that's not you anymore. You're a new creation in God. And because you're here, it just shows you that God has a purpose for you and that he wants to work in your life and through you, just like how he did King David. And what did King David go on to do? He defeated Goliath. He became king. He did many things. Though he was not perfect at some times, but he knew how to ask for forgiveness and he knew how God would use him. Um, so I just wanted to do one exercise just to show you um, what happens when we carry all these toxic thoughts and what it does to our physical body. So can I use two boys, um, Jojo and Elijah? Can I use you guys? Okay, come up. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Elijah being the bigger one. And the little one. Yeah, so we'll, Elijah could be um, the person with the worries, and then Jojo will be the worries. So Jojo, get on his back, so you're going to piggyback him, right? <laughs> okay, you see how easy that was? This is Jojo letting God take care of his worries. 
Now walk down the hall uh, and come back. See how easy that is? Jojo's trusting the Lord. <laughs> Jojo's reading his word. Jojo's, I mean, Elijah's praying. He's worshiping. He's coming to service. He's d doing his devotions. Look how easy it is. No worries, right? Gross. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jojo, let's do it the other way. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Jojo doesn't pray. Go. Jojo doesn't pray, doesn't read his word. He lets toxic thoughts run his life. He listens to his friends. Oh my god. And then we're stumbling, right? In the in the spirit. Good job. Now you see how that is in the spiritual, that's what our spirit looks like when we don't trust God and we let the enemy just run our lives and play in our mind like a battlefield. That's what he does when we don't let him, when we let him play in our mind. We'll be like Jojo stumbling everywhere, coming to service, not knowing where to go. Got it? Okay, that's it for me.